Alright everyone, this is a gene for a new episode of GM Insect Discovery. And in this little plastic bottle, I have a new project. And also some really great uh, metaphor. So let's explore this completely new world. So first of all, the fern that you can see uh, right here. Let me use this uh, stick to guide you. So that big fern right here, um, that was actually from the bowl vivarium, uh, as well as the moss right here, uh, which were the same species as this one. And there is quite a lot of um, other type of moss uh, brought from this and the, uh, this project. So I've been recycling pretty much a lot of things for this small vivarium. Um, and if you look right at the middle right here, you can kind of see the dead body uh, dismantle of the um, grasshopper. And that grasshopper was previously kept in this Vivarium. So sadly, she died from unknown reason. And by the way, this right here, the little spot on the glass, is actually the frog. So that's actually a frog able to climb. Pretty interesting, right? Um, so let me just check things out. So basically, uh, I have the intention to build something better uh, with a better container than this bo uh, plastic bottle because uh, the weird shape and all doesn't uh, give us a good um, kind of look really uh, except when we check out from the bottom uh, from below, sorry uh, but there is an interesting uh, bug in here and he was actually in this uh, vivarium so let me just pause the video and check out if I can uh, spot him. Alright, there we go. So you can see him right here. Let me zoom on him. So that right here was the black beetle from uh, the previous bowl vivarium. And he's the main um, interest in this vivarium. And I name him uh, Dante. Let's see if we can actually. Uh, yeah, we can have a good look at him. He's right here. Uh, this being the head, and this being the abdomen, and this being the thorax. But yeah, I call him Dante uh, because he kind of remind me of the Seven Sins um, and his whole situation really kind of uh, remind me of big uh, of the Divin comedy uh, but yeah basically he's a glutton um, he's kind of a slut because he don't do a lot except eating and he really um, he's defending his territory uh, at all cost and he's pretty much a mean mean bug but I kind of like him um, and find him interesting. So in this, uh, pretty much this uh, vivarium and all, um, kind of will represent uh, the human condition. So basically we have a perfect setup. Um, we have the moss and the plants that creates oxygen and uh, it can self-sustain themselves. But then we have uh, Dante, the black beetle. and he, oh, and we have also that uh, other bug right here, uh, that kind of serve uh, as food for him. Uh, but yeah, basically Dante just appeared in this vivarium, and now he solely rely on uh, a source of food that is brought uh, from me. And in that sense, he kind of uh, remind me of the human condition as we only uh, use uh, fossil energy to um, 
to really prosper and everything, but that energy won't last forever, and what will happen then? So if I stop feeding uh, Dante, he's going to probably just eat every small uh, insect and uh, invert that are in there, and then uh, after destroying everything he can uh, to survive, he's going to uh, eventually die. So, but also, uh, if I release him now, he's going to die anyway from winter, uh, which is really close at this point. So in the wild he have only a few more weeks to live, uh, while in the, this vivarium he might survive all winter long. So he kind of is um, really interesting to look at him. Uh, as a human being, I mean, kind of destroyed everything, and we rely on energy that uh, is slowly disappearing, and we just destroy, 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 and then uh, we we don't really brought anything to this entire uh, planet we will live upon. Oh, might see some drama occurring. Yeah, Dante is really an aggressive um, beetle. And now he have, uh, we have the other um, insect. I don't know how to call it, uh, say him, his name in English. Uh, but that insect right here is a leaf eater. So he could technically destroy all the vegetation uh, and pretty much destroy all the ecosystem if he survive. So in a sense Dante is useful for this ecosystem and all he do is provide some energy for the plants as he eat and decompose some uh, living material. But eventually he will not uh, be useful um, for the environment and cause more harm to it. He will probably uh, be able to change it quite a lot in his uh, remaining um, days or weeks or month of life. But yeah, I'm hoping to see some kind of action uh, at this point. But really, I think it is a really interesting concept of uh, vivarium. And I'm going to use a, um, a bigger jar uh, simply because I don't think this bottle can really sustain uh, this big beetle and everything. Um, I mean, you don't have that much space, but I might try to bring him uh, in my home for the winter. So, yeah, um, also there is some isopod, well I don't know if uh, Dante have eaten all of them yet, but there is some isopod, and those isopod were uh, raised by me, so I bred them in the um, dead leaf vivarium. And this is pretty interesting, as the only new captivity from the moment they were brought to this world, and now they are brought in a completely different uh, setup. Um, to kind of be the uh, decomposure that will kind of eat all the dead leaves and the dead moss, and it help all the plants prosper. So in this uh, setup, the isopod uh, are the most precious uh, thing. But this uh, big uh, beetle might actually eat them. And so it is another link from for our human condition. As we human destroy uh, things that are really useful for nature. And we just are uh, kind of corrupt in a way. Uh, we are destructive, trying to eat everything. Uh, trying to expand our territory. But uh, at one point the planet isn't growing and we continue to grow and demand more and more energy but at one point 
um, we will reach our limit and what will happen then. So, oh, I think he's just going to dig his way in the hearth of in the substrate uh, again. Yeah, I kind of put too much water in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of see this project as a really uh, philosophical and biblical kind of project. Sorry, I just have a end on my arm right here. Maybe I'm going to put it. I didn't put it in the. I didn't put it in the vivarium afterward. Uh, but yeah. I really like that black beetle, really. Um, he's super interesting and he doesn't demand uh, quite a lot of maintenance. All he needs is something to eat and I will be able to provide him some meat, some actual meat like ham or bacon or something like that uh, during the winter. But for now, I'm feeding him with some live food. So, worms, slugs, uh, dead insect and well he might try to eat that uh, other insect right there Oops. But yeah, I'm going to create another setup um, where it's easier for me to clean uh, the leftovers because right now there is some leftovers and that might cause a, a certain problem at the end of the day so uh, the old concept of those vivarium, uh, well, of this vivarium, pretty much, is to create a setup that can uh, self-sustain itself. Um, but with Dante, that won't be possible, as he uh, requires some specific care. Um, and yeah, I kind of think it is interesting to set up uh, this vivarium in a plastic bottle. So if you think if you find some plastic bottle in the wild, um, you can actually use them as small vivarium to create kind of a metaphorical thing. So plastic bottle are really bad for the environment, but you can actually grow out your little tiny world in a plastic bottle which is good for the environment. So yeah. I guess Dante is just going to sleep at this point. Um, and as I said, I'm going to uh, actually take a pickle jar and transform it into a bigger vivarium so it will be more stable and easier to clean because right now I just have to kind of put a branch in there and try to pick up the gross remaining of the locust, uh, the grasshopper, sorry. Oh. See that? He's super aggressive. Whoa. I wouldn't walk on him if I was that bug. But in the meantime, he have kind of eat quite a lot yesterday. You can kind of see it by his big, big, big belly. Well, you can kind of not see it that much, but I, I know it have eat quite a lot. I really hope he didn't eat all the isopod in there. I mean, the sorry, the isopod are really useful, and yeah. Kind of funny also, uh, because when I pick up, and pick him up for uh, putting him in this um, vivarium, what I did is, uh, let me just unzoom, sorry. What I did is, uh, I actually pick him up, put him here. Well, actually, I, I had him in my fingers, and I had the, uh, the dead lo uh, grasshoppers in my other end. And I make him bite the grasshoppers, and then I release him. 
And if he had the opportunity to just go away. But he he was such a glutton and a, you know, a, a kind of a fool that he, instead of uh, getting the opportunity to run, he decided to eat and he was trying to carry the food that hide. But I was able to pick him up and put him in there. So yeah, he had a chance to, to be free. But sometimes uh, animal and insect prefer to eat and everything that, uh, than to um, be free. And yeah, there is quite a lot of people that, uh, well, some a few people uh, that really don't like uh, what I'm doing. So capturing an insect or uh, the newt and putting him in those uh, container basically that type of beetle is really territorial and I often see uh, one at the same spot like I flip some rocks sometimes to watch under it and I'll always see some beetles and if I'm not able to catch one uh, one day I can catch him the, other, uh, the next day because they remain in the same spot. I mean, they have the entire night in nature, but they choose to stay in one spot. So that's why I prefer to capture those type of insect and put them in containers, as in the wild, they kind of remain in the same spot anyway. Same goes for spiders, for example. I mean, they can explore the entire world, but they kind of decide to just uh, use their webs and create their own world and their own hunting ground so yeah, I strongly suggest if you want to do a project like I do uh, to, f to try to capture some territorial insect as they don't really need quite a lot of space and they can be happy uh, and small st and territories as they literally limit themselves in the wild so having some limit to their um, territory by putting them in containers kind of just uh, make them feel safe compared to other animals that just roam the world and go everywhere for example uh, birds I mean they, they fly everywhere while other insects and animals prefer to remain at the same spot so this is why I prefer to um, have animals and small insects like this one territorial uh, animals and insects in containers and I don't feel bad about it as it's a great way to kind of understand uh, a smaller world and also a way to kind of um, understand our own world so anyway thanks a lot for watching um, as I said before I'm going to create this vivarium in a bigger container so we can have a better view and uh, that this black beetle can have more space um, because I kind of don't think this little plastic bottle is big enough for him uh, but yeah it's going to be an interesting project I hope Thanks for watching.